Hello and welcome to ADTV and today we've come back out on the banks with Phil Spinks and we're going to be talking you through some drift afloat fishing for pike. Now as you can see in true Mr Spinks fashion he's got down here a touch before us and he's already had these two little fellas ready for the camera when we got here. So I think it's time we pop these ones back Phil and I'm going to fire some questions at you because it is actually a very interesting method and pick your brains and see if we can't help anyone if you've never seen it used before. So Phil's just popped those two fish back and it is always good to see him swim away strongly but I must say it is proper pike fishing weather. Phil's probably a bit hardened to this but it's freezing cold, it's a nice cold wind so good pike fishing weather but not good for me so <laughs> we've tucked away inside the brolly but it's give us a good time now Phil to pick your brains about exactly how you've caught those fish and how you're going to be fishing today. So I already touched on you're fishing a drift afloat yeah. but for me potentially it's a method that has great potential but is underused in my opinion. Yeah. So for anyone who's not seen it before what in essence is drift afloat fishing? Um, it is exactly what it sounds to be fair. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fishing a float that's got a, a large vein on the top of it that will catch the wind and you can and you can drift baits long distances. Yeah. So like this gravel pit where we are today is a very sort of open windswept yeah, water. Yeah it's perfect yeah. Um, and it's just a way of, of, of working it almost like trotting on a river you can just do long trots with a float all different angles and just cover a lot of water yeah. in a day. Oh, I like that I like that analogy but comparing it to a river because like basically the big vein in the float catching the wind and it, it drifts off doesn't yeah. it so I'm guessing that you have to tailor the venue and conditions to suit so what I mean by that is it would be no good in sort of like a small lake with no wind because it's not no. going to drift no? no so what we've got today is perfect but what so this is what you're looking for big waters and yeah and it's, it's worth doing a little bit of homework the night before I mean I had a look last night on Google Earth yep. and at the weather to, you know you need to pick obvious but you need to pick the bank with the wind on your back. Yeah, it's not going to drift very high on your face is it yeah, and, um, and just think about what area of the lake you want to try and get your baits to drift into um yeah it's just just a little bit of planning a little bit homework. To drift a float yeah exactly out. so you can't always use it but in the right conditions can be effective so with the drift float itself phil obviously you're setting it at a particular depth yeah are you worried about setting it too deep and perhaps dragging over bars I'd, or I'd rather have it too shallow than too deep okay um, and i'm quite happy to fish it almost half depth yeah um the problem being it might be 10 foot when you cast it out exactly in the it edge, goes up yeah and then you might get 30 40 yards and you might have a shallow gravel bar yep. or a weed bed um but i'm happy to fish it sort of quite high up in the water and I mean, if you look at the way a pike is designed, his eyes are on top of his head. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's looking up at his prey a lot of the time yeah. and they will come up. I've had, I've had pike hit them what I've set about four foot deep in probably 15, 20 foot of water. Ah, so you would have no so problem fishing it, really hard. Yeah. I, it's nothing worse. You get it, you're then getting it drifting nicely and it snags, snags up on something. In. You've got to yeah. wind it in and start again. Yeah, no. so, I guess what you're saying in a general sort of a natural environment, they are coming up and hitting them. So you're just imitating, you know, a natural reaction from a fish yeah. hopefully so let's talk about this is the serious bit so <laughs> the rig itself for someone who hasn't seen it potentially looks complicated but when you break it down it's actually not is it it's no. quite simple so just talk through how you set the rig up and exactly how it works um like all my, my float rigs um i've got a stop knot and a bead yep um, or you can use a float stop and a bead that's so you set your depth with just that to yeah? set your depth yeah yep. i mean i always use a braided main line yeah um the float itself, I've got one of the floats here because they, they probably look a bit intimidating. <laughs> they do when, when you get them in a bag. How does this work? <laughs> They're not that bad. This is the bit that confuses a few people. It's like a controller arm. Um, your line goes straight through the middle of that arm and you actually clip your float onto the arm. Yeah. And the reason you've got that, if I just had my braid going up through the float, it's quite likely that the braid's going to keep wrapping around the float and tangling. Oh, I see um, what you mean, yeah. It, it's on quite a large swivel on the arm. Um, so it doesn't matter how much that spins and twists in the wind, yep. it isn't going to tangle up very easily. Um, and this arm as well, when it when it's drifting across, it'll be well back there and it keeps the braid away from yeah. the float and stops tangles. It's a pretty tangle proof actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. And, and the whole arm will just slide up the line until it hits the bead and the stop knot at whatever depth you want to fish it. Yep. Um, the next point, which I think is very important, is I always fish mine with an up trace. Um, and an up trace is about probably two, two and a half foot of wire above your actual wire trace. I'm with it, yep. Um, at the bottom of the up trace, I've got my weight, which will make the float stand up. Yep. The, with a strong clip. And, and then your actual trace. trace. Um, the reason you want that up trace 
is if you imagine the pike is striking up at your bait, yep. is there's always a chance as he comes up and hits your bait, he's going to get a mouthful of the braid above the trace. Oh yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Has he... and, and if you were to use the rig with a live bait, your live bait could swim up above your weight, yep. in line with the braid above your trace, yeah. and you could get bit off. So it's, <laughs> yeah, no. it's, it's what I mean, it isn't, it's just another five minute job to put on there and then you yep. know it's 100% safe. No, I do like that and I'm glad you pointed it out because for what, putting two, three foot of wire above it, exactly what you said, most of these bites, they are gonna be coming up. How easy to get a mouthful of braid yeah, is, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. So long as your up trace is slightly longer than your your um, bait trace on the bottom, then you Okay, yeah, problem. that makes it cool. So there's a few tips on how to set up. Like I said, for me, when I first saw it, looked quite daunting, but it's really not. When you see it in action, it's very good. So last thing, Phil, I wanna to touch on is baits. So from a pike fishing novice, I can't imagine seeing many sort of half eel sections bobbing around <laughs> in the middle of the lake. So are you fishing baits that they'd naturally see swim like midwater or? For me, I quite like dead coarse baits, like dead roach, dead skimmers. Yeah. And the beauty of the drifter float is you can almost make it look, look as if it's alive again. Yeah, I'm with um, you, hey, I can see that. Hook it so it's sitting horizontal, so your top hook will go in its dorsal fin and the other one just down the fish's flanks near its peck fin. Yeah. As it's drifting across the lake, it's gently going to be rocking and drifting through and it almost looks like a swim. Yeah, it's bobbing on the waves, I yeah. guess, as well, isn't it? Yeah. No, that's good. So you can see, literally, a dead bait creating as much life as natural as it looks, and hopefully that's what's going to catch in a fish. Fingers crossed. Well, it's gone good practice. I'm going to sit and watch you fish it some more. But if you haven't been out there using it, like I said, the conditions have to be right, but it can be seriously effective. So get yourself out fishing on the drifter float. Ha 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 ha.